Yo guys, what is going on? Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drive. We've got a brand new final and tri-series upon us. And of course, with every single tri-series comes a special pack. Over here is the UK New Wave and Lock to Lock Super Carbon. And obviously, this is the pack that you need to open if you want to get the cars required for the current final going on for the Mazda. One thing to take note as well is that if you go into challenges, there is a bonus challenge because nowadays we don't want challenges not enough. We need challenges in challenges in challenges. Um, we, got a, we got a bonus one for the Mazda sky active d elite tune-up or whatever it is i guess it's a harder tune-up where you can get the skoda a freak pretty cool honestly um for four wheel drives high ground clearance cars um with off-road tires this one isn't too bad it looks like a better option than the bronco one thing to take note of the skoda as well is that it's very light for its niche 1350 kilograms this could be something to take notes of so that's pretty cool another thing that i also want to mention very briefly is i think that in the shadows replayable unfinished business concept is a bit of a failure because i've I, it has not incentivized me to play at all like if you can give me um replayable packs i don't really care like i've been having to sit here just for the past couple of days now i did finish some of the higher like counts for the cash or for the lower ones, like the 800s, I just really didn't care. But anyway, moving on to the main part of the video, how good is the pack for the final? So, in recent episodes for what you can get from that pack, I have been very stressed. Because I think it's time to change my approach at how I run this series. Now, I love the gimmick. I think it can be funny. It's still funny to me, calling things Dirk Kaiser all the way to hot garbage. But the way the climate of the game is going right now, I feel like Hutch is trying really hard for no car to genuinely be quote-unquote hot garbage. They will make every single car useful and i commend that i actually do respect that so because of that i'm changing the tier names for now we're gonna have highly versatile versatile requires some criteria so the cars that go in here are only going to be useful if it's based on special requirements um requires a stc which is a special tag challenge because obviously special tag challenges are renowned for using cars that people don't like to upgrade and use so you know they're only useful in those scenarios and bro they made it the only option which is basically a nice way of saying it's hot garbage basically there's going to be one event you know maybe once a year once every two years where this one ultra that you never thought was going to be useful probably is going to be useful so that's going to be the final rank it's called bro they made it the only option imagine like it was like i mean this is notorious in special time challenges now it's like yes um it's a motocross that you need to beat and you can only use an rq 53 car and lo and behold that rq 53 high ground clearance car might be terrible among its peers but since it's the only option to use you kind of need it so that's kind of why that option is there so hopefully uh this should probably lighten up some of the debates that I usually have with this series of people saying that I'm wrong when I say I call a car garbage and they're like, oh, no, I mean, not garbage. I used it this one time in my 20 year existence in life. Shut up, okay, honestly. But yeah, I hope that this is a little bit more accurate. So let us begin the Caterham 7310R and I'm going to put it in, require some criteria. And those criteria being, I see it useful in European New Wave challenges, uh, European New Wave events that also center around more twisty track sets. I feel like at the end of the day, if it was more general requirements, you'd still be using a Maxi, uh, Maxi Turbo. And if you are not, well, not Maxi Turbo, just a Maxi. And if you couldn't use slick tires, you'd be using the Zenus instead, especially since the Zenus and the Caterham are both British. Uh, moving on is the Ford Fiesta ST. Again, I'm going to say it requires some criteria. Medium ground clearance, it handles pretty well for his niche as well. And I think that it genuinely is an RQ50. There are a lot of RQ50s in the game where I feel like they should be super rare, like 49 or 48, but the Fiesta ST is a genuine 50. I feel like if every single 50 that needed to go down in RQ went down in RQ today, um, the Fiesta wouldn't be one of them. It would stay in 50. Uh, moving on to Ford Focus ST. This requires a special tag challenge, in my opinion. Um, it's slightly higher in RQ compared to the ST, making it a mid-range out... Uh, Ouch, bit my tongue there. Making it a bit uh, mid range, ultra rare, bit range, mid range, ultra rare. And I gotta be honest, I don't use the Focus ST at all. Um, within that RQ range, I'm always gravitating towards the uh, Renault Magon. So, uh, you know, it's way better. They're both front wheel drive, they're both medium ground clearance, they're both hatchbacks. So, because of that, the Ford Focus ST, I think, requires a special tag challenge. Moving on to the Ford Kuga, bro, they, they made it the only option. Seriously, I, I, I've had this car since the beginning of the update, I have it stock. And I'm an ultra collector. I've never needed to use it once. Um, the Ford Ranger Raptor V6 is highly versatile. Absolutely highly versatile. You can use it in multiplayer events. You can use it in clubs. Uh, it handles incredibly.
incredibly well. Four wheel drive, off road tires, uh, fantastic. Honestly, a fantastic car to have. Uh, the Juno G40 GT5. It's a versatile car, really cheap to use, 102 handling. Um, it's 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 a very useful car. I, I do use it from time to time. I think I used it as recently as two days ago in clubs. Uh, moving on to Janita G60, it requires some criteria. The MRE in this car is pretty decent. I think it's around the mid 80s. Um, handling is pretty good as well. But the main thing about the Janita that kind of brings it down in value, in my opinion, is the top speed could be a little bit better. I feel like a lot of ultra airs that are meant to have that drag element, you know, ultra airs with better MRA, um, usually surpass 175 miles per hour so 165 could be a little better it's not bad but it could be a little better 0 to 60 could definitely be a lot lower as well uh moving on is the lotus exceed 240r that is going to be versatile um again i feel like it suffers the same disadvantages as the caterham 7310r where it's just always going to be second to the Zenus. it's always going to be second to the exceed it's always going to be second to the Peugeot maxi but of course the lotus is a better version of the caterham and therefore i'm putting the lotus in a higher rank Moving on to the Morgans. Now, the Morgans, I've talked about Morgans so many freaking times on the channel, but I will talk about them again very briefly. So over here is the ultimate Morgan chart. One of the Morgans that I would really pay attention to, I would say it's the Aero GT, the Aero Super Sports, the Plus 6, the Plus 8, and the Plus 4. That's it. Everything else, mm, kind of useless in my opinion. Um, I'm not. That's not to say that these Morgans that I said they're not useless, the ones to look out for, are not useless. They're just less useless. At the end of the day, I'm comparing Morgans with Morgans. It's the same thing of saying I'm comparing shit with shit. Like, the moment I put in a Maxi, the moment I even... No, it doesn't even need to be a Maxi. I can just put in a Porsche. So let me just get rid of, clear everything, put in B again. Uh, let's just go Porsche. Oh, another good one is the Alpha. Alpha 4C Spider. And then we can go with the Porsche. So I'm not even using, like, kind of the first the best cars i'm not even thinking about the maxi or i'm not even thinking about the zenus if i put in the alpha for example two three three as you can see it just becomes the best car uh, for everything everywhere all at once so back to morgan's what were the ones that we said were pretty good it was like the aero gt so i'll put that in requires some criteria i think it'd be pretty useful um the plus four i would even say is versatile because it's really cheap to use compared to all the other morgan's that we talked about um all the other ones which are which are pretty useful are 60 plus but the morgan plus four is less than that. So I, I do add, I think that's additional value um, in being cheap to use. The plus six is a pretty decent dragster. For that car, I'll definitely go 332. I have one 332. The plus eight is good for fast circuit and fast circuit rolling. So it's pretty strong in those areas. And then with the Aero Super Sports as well. So those are all the pretty decent ones. And then everything else, in my opinion, either requires a special tag challenge or bro, they only made it the only option. So these two definitely, uh, bro, they only made it the only option. Um, I would say that uh, more of these ones are probably require a special tag challenge let me put all of them in here first and then i'm gonna kind of rebalance it out so the lower rq stuff i'm gonna bring it down and in the 63 i'm gonna bring it down too because honestly this morgan era 8 series 5 is a huge disappointment um it's what well, it's the most useless of the expensive morgans like all the 63s and the 62s it doesn't win anything so i'm gonna put that in bro they only made it the only option uh last ultra ears to talk about are the tbrs the 420 the chimera and the tuscan the tuscan requires a special tag challenge in my opinion the 420 and the chimera honestly bro they, they made it literally the only option i can't remember the last time i even used those cars the chimera i think was actually useful in a recent special tag challenge well useful not useful but included but I never used it anyway, so yeah, that was a bit of a miss. Moving on to the Epics now, we're going to begin with the Caterhams. And honestly, the lower tier Caterhams, they are pretty decent. Like, you can't go wrong with a Caterham. They're all really light hand, uh, they're all really lightweight, and they all handle very well. Um, but I would say that it requires some criteria. I think the main thing for these two cards is that Hudge will need to do an event where it's like, oh, it's like RQ 50 to 75 or RQ 50 to 70, you know what I mean? Like if 79 is an RQ that you can use in any epic event or any event in general, you would use a 79 anyway. So those two I put in require some criteria. Uh, moving on is the Caterham Super 7 2000, and I'm gonna put it in highly versatile. That thing is ridiculous. I mean, it's Centaur, it's lightweight, 94 handling, and 4.0 for a 0 to 16, 4.094. Those are the stats at 233. Um, one thing to note about that Super 7 though, which is a little bit disappointing, is that it still loses on the slalom compared to the RQ 65 version, which is, I believe, the Super 7 as well, I think the name is, um, the one that's been in the game for the longest time ever. Um, so it still loses to that, <laughs> literally on the, I think there's 270, is it Caterham 
7270, I think it is. Um, the one that isn't uh, European New Wave. But yeah, that is still the best car for the slalom. But the Super 7 is stronger everywhere else. Um, the Janetta F40Q, I think it's F40Q, requires a special tag challenge. Again, it's basically an epic version of the G60, but so much more expensive to upgrade. Janetta G50 GT4, in my opinion, is highly versatile, as well as the Janetta G56, is it? Yeah, G56 GTA. Um, these two cars are just pioneers in their own RQ ranges, uh, you know, mid-range epic and high-range epic. Um, they handle incredibly well, and the G50 GT4 has good MRA as well, but the top speed is low. That is one thing to consider. The top speed is low. The Exige GT3 is highly versatile, and the Radical, I would even say, is highly versatile. Nothing pretty. It's, it's highly versatile. Actually, one fun fact to know, the Radical beats the Exige GT3, I believe, on G-Force, if not the tie. Um, and then the Radical and the Lotus Exige tie on the slalom it's one or the other but there is no way the radical loses to the exige gt3 whether it's slalom or g4 it's just that one of them they tie and one of them the radical wins so yeah i mean these two are really really impressive cars especially the radical with that zero to 60 i didn't think it was going to be that good but the mra is ridiculous handling is high and it's incredibly lightweight so that's a car that i'm actually really happy to have um lotus exige v6 cup i'm gonna give it in versatile uh lotus exige v6 cup r I'm gonna give highly versatile. That this car is uh, fantastic. I mean, it it literally is like the G50, but better in the super twisty scenarios because that lowers zero to sixty. It's also lighter. Um, but the Exige has like no MRA. The Janetta has MRA. Uh, moving on are the Epic Morgans. I mean, yeah, they made this the only option. I mean, honestly, we've seen situations where the Morgan Aero Coupe was used as the only option and people refuse to use it anyway. Um, that thing is beyond terrible. Uh, the Morgan Plus 8 GTR also is just absolutely garbage. The Morgan Plus 8 GTR GT2 though, this one is really good in my opinion, and I'm going to put it in high versatile. One thing about the high-end lock-to-lock epics is that they're all really good. Um, so yeah, I'll put that in highly versatile as well. The TBR Sabera Speed 8 is trash. Now, moving on to the legendaries, we're going to start off with the Morgan Aero 8 GT3. On by itself, they bro, they only made it the only option. Like, it's it's such a terrible legendary. It's it's ridiculously shit. But I've said in my previous video, the Aero 8 GT3 is kind of like the Zonda S or the Jaguar 575, where it's useful because it keeps coming back and back and back and back and it's like the only one it's like a reoccurring nightmare so because of that i'm saying it requires some criteria because every single uh, criteria that hodge makes i feel like the morgan era agt3 is always in it so i'm actually going to put it mid-range not because it's a good car but because because of what it is simply um it tends to be useful because hodge likes to use it it's a it's an anomaly it feels weird to put it there it's a terrible legendary but honestly like i said previously if you had this car really early on when it came out in lots of luck and you actually were one of the people that fully upgraded it it's probably won you three to four prize cars at this point and it might win you another one uh moving on to Jenna g55 gt3 i'm gonna give that versatile and the gt4 i'm gonna give that requires criteria uh, now, moving on to the Lotus Vora GX again, it's definitely versatile. And then we move on to the Radical. So the last thing I want to talk about today, before we open the pack, are the Radicals. So here are the Radicals. For the most part, like the Morgans, I am comparing them with themselves. But I did throw in a couple of Vipers and a Porsche RSR in there just to see like if they could make a dent. Not really. Um, I would say that the Radicals to really pay attention towards would be the SR10, uh, the SR8, uh, and the Radical rxc v8 so i believe this is slick tires or performance yeah this is performance tires and the sr8 is slick tires and the radical sr10 is also slick tires some other ones to pay attention to would be the radical sr3 rs uh being the best car for the car park and the slalom as well one thing to take note about the radicals as well is that i kind of just thought that every single radical had pretty good mra but that's not the case uh, some of them have pretty terrible MRI. For example, the 81 RQ only has 80 MRI, or 79.07. The 82 SR3 SL, although has really good on-paper stats, only has 68 MRI. And last but not least, the Radical SR3 only has 81 MRI. And the RXC Spider 
This one is a bit of a garbage one as well. It's 67.5 MRI on that, uh, which doesn't make it really good, especially for an RQ91 car. So that's one thing to think about. Also, the moment I put in the times for the Porsche 935, um, the Porsche 935 becomes the more dominant car. Uh, but then again, you know, it's it's fair. It's one RQ higher than all the radicals that you see. So it is the better car. So moving on back to the tier list, we now know what the radicals basically are. I would still say the radicals like the SR3, even though they have lower MRAs, they're still pretty damn useful. So I'm gonna put most of these radicals in versatile uh, with some of them going on to the highest ranks as well. So the highest ranks belongs to the radical SR10, in my opinion, being, you know, the best car from the update. Uh, and then we also have the RXC V8 as well as the radical SR8 VX. I, I think there was one more RQ90, yeah, the SR3 RS. I think these were the ones that kind of had the best times among all the radicals. So these four are going to remain in highly versatile. And then the rest of the radicals are going to go to versatile besides the RXC. I just feel like honestly, 67 MRA, your 91 RQ, I just expect better. I just genuinely expect better. And I think the only reason why the RXC is at 91 is because it has kind of an outlier for that zero to 60. It has a very, very low zero to 60, making it a decent short burst car, but it has more more disadvantages than it has advantages. The RXC has a low zero to 60, but it has no MRI and no handling as well. Only 94 compared to, you know, 97, 96. And honestly, the 81 RQ, which is a 10 RQ difference between these two cars, only has one handling and uh, one one handling count in difference as well, 93 to 94. So in my opinion, I just don't think that the RXC is that good. I don't even think it deserves to be 91, maybe 90, maybe. But anyway, guys, that's going to be my final verdict of the entire pack. Honestly, it's a pretty decent pack. And we're gonna go back to the game because I'm gonna be opening one of them as well. Honestly, my true final verdict of this pack is kind of bittersweet. I'm kind of glad that lock to lock is in it, but I'm also kind of sad that lock to lock is in it. The reason why I'm glad that lock to lock is in it is because it gives more players a chance. Um, the fact that it's not just, you know, British European new wave cars makes the final a lot less pay to win. Um, also, it gives me a lot more chance because I have way more lots of lot cars than I have European New Wave. I mean, I'll show you what I've got. The only thing I have representing European New Wave, I'm pretty sure, on the high end, is simply one car and everything else in my hand is going to be lock to lock. So if we're going to Sky Active D, uh, the finals over here, I'll show you what I'm running. As you can see, I just have a crap ton of Janina G50s, uh, GT4. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, I'll probably want four of them and the Evora, that would be the best hand, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, but I'm gonna put in probably a Radical because it's brand new and I think it's pretty cool. The X Siege as well. So maybe something like that will be my hand. Um, so yeah, if it wasn't for lock to lock, I would be in a really terrible situation. But also because of the inclusion of lock to lock, Lock. I feel like it does devalue the carbon fiber just a little bit because it brings in all these Morgans that I feel like not a lot of people are going to enjoy unless they're brazen. Um, so, you know, there, there are pros and cons. I, I would say that this is a pretty decent pack to open, especially if you're looking for a radical. So I'm going to open it. 99 gold. I mean, it, this is a great deal. It's it's 50% off and it's boosted as well. Uh, I will always, I mean, as long as they do, oh, it's a bit too late to get that now. I finished in the shadows already. If they are going to do this 50% off carbon fibers with boosted odds, fantastic at least two ultras with boosted odds for every final i will open every single one of them ford focus st to start let's see what we got a morgan or eight series one so yeah nothing too fancy about that that being said though i do want to open one more because i i genuinely think that this is a pretty cool pack so i'm gonna go up another one 35 percent uh for a an epic and 100 percent and even 10 percent for another ultra so there might be a chance we get three but anyway i'll open one more of these and that's it that's gonna be today's video i'm not really interested in going for the prize car but i am interested in the pack all right so we're not getting a triple super but we are getting a 62, so that's pretty decent. That's already better than the uh, last carbon that we opened. But then again, there are a couple 63s and 64s that you can get. Could be another Morgan. So I'm going to be reserved with my... Um, well, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm not going to react. Well, that was easy. That was very easy to do, actually. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. Two carbon fibers, four ultra ears. That is very happy. I'll be feeding them away very shortly into some of my epics. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stay safe. Wash your hands and blossom out. Peace. Bro, this song just makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. 
Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nifty, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jukebox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nifty, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jukebox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Sit back, relax in my Bonneville, Pontiac, hold tight all night, cruise to Jacksonville, Atlantic, 